Hi guys, today I'm in Toronto, Ontario, checking out the Royal Ontario Museum. We're going to check out a couple of the special exhibits that are on display here and see if we can explore some of the other galleries. Let's go check it out! The Royal Ontario Museum is Toronto's Museum of Art, Culture and Natural History. It's one of the largest museums in North America and is the largest in Canada with more than 13 million items contained in 40 galleries. The museum attracts more than a million visitors each year, making it the most visited museum in Canada. To get us started, let's take a look at some great whales. This is a skeleton of a young adult sperm whale. This is a young adult sperm whale that was beached and died in 2001 on Prince Edward Island. This skeleton's a much larger blue whale the blue whale got its name from the color that they appear underwater, but above water they actually look gray. The blue whales are the largest animal to ever live on Earth. Check out the size of these whale ear bones. That ear bone alone is about the size of my head right there. And this giant replica here is the size of a blue whale's heart. Looks like it's about five or six feet tall, almost as tall as I am. Can't imagine how much power that would have when it's speeding. Comparing the size to hearts of other creatures, there's a killer whale heart, pretty big. A human heart there, quite a bit smaller. A raccoon heart. And right down here, under the magnifying glass, that's a white-footed mouse heart right there. Here's a skeleton of a Pachycetus, which lived about 47 to 52 million years ago. And they lived in freshwater areas uh, around what's now Pakistan. And they lived on land, but could enter the water easily. And right down here is an artist's rendition of what a Pachycetus looks like. Apparently, they think that the first whales actually lived on land and water. So there's a bit of a whale hybrid. It looks like a little bit like a rodent. And this is Ambulocetus. And you can see from the other, the last one, that uh, now his appendages are a little bit more whale-like. See back there, a little bit less like limbs and a little bit more like whale fins. Moving further along the evolution, this is a Cuchicetus, which lived about 41 to 48 million years ago. Located in the saltwater areas around Pakistan. And again, this is now more of a marine animal. You can see the long tail, and the appendages are much, much smaller now. We're going through the evolution of a whale. And finally, here's a skeleton of a Dorodon which is when whales became fully aquatic. And these lived about 34 to 41 million years ago. And there's an artist's rendition of a Dorodon. Looks a lot more like a dolphin. So that's interesting. I didn't know that whales started out as land animals and evolved into marine animals. Learn something new every day. Here's a cool little diagram that shows that evolution. So all the different branches up there, up here's the Dorodon. If we keep going, those are the big whales we know today. Toothed whales and baleen whales, I guess being the two different types, but that's very cool. I had no idea that whales started out as a land animal. Here's an example from the toothed whale side of the family. These are sperm whale teeth. 
It says sperm whales have 18 to 30 teeth on each side of their lower jaw. They're probably about as big as my, my hand there. Some big teeth. And here on the other side of the whale family, the baleen whales, you can see all the different hair-like structures that are used to filter food out of the water. Of course, that's part of a very giant skull right there. This is talking about some of the different whale populations. It says there's less than 20,000 blue whales left worldwide, and the population is reduced by 94% since before whaling started. That's quite a drastic drop. Over here, sperm whales, it says there's 360,000 of them left, and it's been reduced by about 65%. But over here, North Atlantic right whales, unfortunately, have suffered quite a bit. It says the population has reduced by 98% since before whaling. There's less than 375 of these guys left. Here are some of the products that were produced using whale materials. Unfortunately, the International Whaling Commission banned the hunting of blue whales in the North Atlantic in 1955, and that ban was extended to the rest of the world 11 years later. Well, it's pretty cool to learn a little bit about whales but it's time to move on to the next exhibit. But this museum is absolutely massive. There's four other levels of galleries to explore, and I have the feeling we're not going to be able to do it all today. So one thing I always enjoy though, is I want to go up to the second level here, which is the natural history area, and we definitely need to check that out. And this area of the museum stresses conservation and talks about extinction and the effects of humans on different types of animals. There's an American bison. Just a ton to explore here. Although one of my favorites, check out this giant guy. It's a giant sunfish, I guess showing how big they can get. He's probably about eight feet tall. This sunfish has a wider wingspan than I am tall. This exhibit shows a king cobra, and I gotta admit, that guy's a lot bigger than I expected. I haven't seen one of these guys in real life, but he's standing at about, I'd say about four feet tall. That is an intimidating creature to run into in the wild. Over here talking about the impact of climate change on the Arctic. There's a little seal and polar bear. Some other Arctic creatures. The musk ox. There's a hare back there. And here a little Arctic fox. Some amazing sea creatures. There's a leatherback sea turtle. He's absolutely massive as well. But down here, this is one of the coolest things. This is probably my favorite fish, the coelacanth. This is a living fossil, and for a long time they thought that this was extinct until fishermen started to catch a couple of these things that they hadn't seen in many, many decades. And now it's recognized that the coelacanth is again a living species. Although it says it hasn't changed much in the last 380 million years. This exhibit shows species that are at risk. Look, here's a little pangolin. And right down here it actually shows whether or not they're endangered. So the tree pangolin it, from South Central Africa is indeed endangered. Same with the Vancouver Island Marmot, the giant panda. Unfortunately over here are some examples of species that haven't been quite as lucky and are now extinct. I guess they've gone the way of the... Well, you know. And look at the size of these giant... I guess this is probably a uh, Alaskan king crab. And he's about four feet across, and those legs are at least a foot and a half each. 
And it reminds me of a time I was diving just off the coast of British Columbia, and I saw the largest spider crabs that I'd ever seen. I'd never seen them before, but I guess it was one time in winter, and the migratory patterns were a little bit different. But they, they looked like these guys. They were nowhere near as big, though. They were probably about two feet across, and there was hundreds of them. Uh, roaming across the ocean floor. So that was a very cool experience to see in person. Some other interesting sea creatures. There's an Atlantic blue crab. Here's a horseshoe crab. And up here, the colorful Caribbean spiny lobster. Some long antennas on that guy. Some more colorful creatures. There's a baboon up there. I believe that's a kiwi bird in there giant Galapagos tortoise here and a little frog called the tomato frog as well as the panther chameleon. Some interesting facts about animals. It says that scientists have only identified about 10% of all living things and that 50 new species of plants, insects and animals are identified every day. A bat cave. Let's check it out. Into the bat cave. Here we go. Oh, there's bats up top. It's very dark in here. We are now about 300 meters from the entrance. This is where you can really see what the cave is all about. Mostly, it's about bats. Look up and you'll see hundreds roosting on the ceiling and walls. Some There's tiny the little bats there. up there. No green bats. There's a small group of ghost-faced bats. Each kind of bat has a preferred roosting area and hangs out with others of its species. Even the mother bats have a special place to roost with their young. Now, if you look below the bats, the floor is a carpet of insects. There must be thousands of them, mostly cockroaches. And it gets worse. They're eating bat dung. Let's head in and explore the dawn of life. Aquatic fossils from the dawns of time, deep in the ancient sea. And I like this guy. It says it's a Dunklosteus, an armored fish with a powerful bite. No kidding. Some artifacts from prehistoric squid. Here's an exhibit about the origins of hands. I guess this is one of the first fish that began to evolve from fins to other appendages. And here's an actual fossil of that guy right down here. Here's an exhibit. It's a representation of the ancient seabed and some of the creatures inside. Little crab there. Uh-oh. Who's that? Underwater centipede. These guys are my favorite. Here's some fossilized trilobites. They're extinct today, but their closest living relative is a horseshoe crab. Into the ancient history gallery here. Some interesting fossils. This is a short-faced bear skeleton from about 28,000 years ago. These giant mastodon lived about 12,000 years ago and had giant tusks. One of my favorite animals, the regular two-toed sloths. Over here by comparison, a giant prehistoric sloth. That is a massive sloth. These guys here were known as terror birds. It says that early in the age of the mammals, giant terror birds were the dominant predators. No doubt with that kind of beak on them. Can't miss out on the T-Rex. 
His giant teeth up there. Rather mediocre arms, but it's got some powerful legs. Some more miniature fossils, miniature horses, and up there, prehistoric rhino. Here's a T-Rex skull right next to a Triceratops skull right there. Actually, somewhat comparable in size, but very different creatures. There's a giant prehistoric tortoise. He's massive. I don't know if you can tell the scale there, but he's 15 feet, maybe? 15 feet? That's one big tortoise. There's a cast of an ankylosaur. I recognize those guys with their spiny armor. This impressive guy here is a Barosaurus. It says they reach an impressive 24 meters long. It looks like a lot of that is just the neck. I'd recognize a Stegosaurus anywhere. Over there's an Allosaurus. Thanks for exploring the Royal Ontario Museum with me today. Unfortunately, this place is so huge that we barely scratched the surface. But we're going to call it a day for today, so remember to keep exploring. Until next time, it's time to exit through the gift shop.